Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the PCB control board in your hot water heater. This particular model is a Navian NR210A, uh, but this video will hopefully help you uh, get some direction on replacing these uh, PCB boards on other models as well. Uh, first off, before you begin, you want to make sure that the power gas lines and water lines are all disabled. Um, in my case here you'll notice I just disabled the power, um, didn't disable the, uh, the other things. If you feel like, uh, you know, use it at your discretion here. At the bottom corner you'll find the serial number of your board if you're looking to order a new one. Also make sure you take note of the pin positions. They'll be uh, important later on when your new board is installed and you need to configure the settings on the board. What I'm showing you now is some painter's tape that I marked some numbers on. Uh, the reason for that, if you notice on the left hand side here, there's quite a few wires um, and a lot of them look exactly the same. Um, so when you start disconnecting these wires, uh, I was a little concerned that I may not put them back in in the correct places. Um, so you'll see me uh, use the tape uh, with the numbers uh, starting from one to seven from top to bottom and I'll uh, label the wires um, in number order as I remove them here just to make sure I put them back in the right places. Uh, some of them might be a little difficult to remove uh, in this particular situation. Some of them had locking clips. Uh, some of them did not lock. Um, so uh, a couple of them I had to use a pair of pliers uh, to loosen them up a little bit. Uh, just make sure you're not grabbing the wires uh, when you use the pliers and you're actually grabbing the uh, plastic connectors to pull them off. And here you can see the pliers on the ones that were a little loose. Just use the uh, pliers to wiggle them a little bit to break them free and then pull them off with my hand. All right, after we removed all the, uh, all the connectors from the left-hand side, I moved to the uh, bottom two wires. Uh, those two wires are for the leak detector that's at the bottom of the board. Um, if those come in contact with water, it'll shut the board down uh, or throw an alarm. Um, so you can see me unscrewing those here. Uh, when I did get to the two cables, uh, the three cables there at the bottom, uh, they started to color code them and they are different sizes, so I didn't feel a need to label those. Uh, also, the uh, same for when we uh, move to the right-hand side here. Um, all those wires are different sizes, and the connectors are different colors, so I didn't feel a need to label those either. All right, now we have all the wires removed. Uh, so next we'll move on to removing the uh, mounting screws. Okay, um, at the top mounting screw here uh, that we're starting at, I had a little trouble getting my screwdriver on it uh, because of the um, burner that's uh, on top of that. Uh, so I took a pair of pliers uh, with a uh, Phillips head uh, bit um, and use that to get to the uh, screw. Uh, there's also some other tools you could use such as uh, socket wrenches and things like that uh, that can help you get to that screws. Uh, that screw, that's hard to get to. Um, there are two more screws uh, besides the top one that hold the board in place. Uh, they're at the bottom. And you can see those two screws there toward the front of the uh, chassis. Right, and we'll remove those first. Of course, be careful when you're removing the last screw that the board doesn't fall forward. Uh, mine's being held in place by the wire harness. And after you take the board off, there's uh, four more wires in the back that connect to the power switch. Now, when I pulled this off, um, I thought it was one entire uh, block 
of wires, but it turns out it's four separate uh, connectors. Uh, so to make sure that I didn't um, put these back in the wrong way, uh, I decided to label the uh, two wires on the left-hand side. Uh, notice that the, the white cables go on the top and the black ones at the bottom. Uh, so I just uh, labeled the two that go on the left to make sure that I uh, put them back in the correct way. Now you will have to save that uh, or reuse that power switch. Uh, my board didn't come with a new one. Uh, so you can pop that out uh, either by hand or with a uh, small screwdriver. All right, so we took that out and we're going to be putting that in the new board. Uh, make sure you put it in the correct direction. Okay, and we will uh, connect that back up. Uh, just do the ones that I labeled first so I can get the tape out of the way. All right, and then after that's in, we could put the board back into place. Uh, again, my wiring harness uh, helps hold that into place while I get the screws in. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom since those are the easiest to get to. Now since this is new threads on this board, I recommend um, going loose, uh, turning it to the left first. See if you feel the screw fall into a thread position and then tighten it. Uh, I didn't tighten them, tighten the first screw yet, uh, just enough to hold the board in place. Then uh, tighten the second screw and came back to the first just to make sure everything um, sat correctly. And then to put that screw back in on the top, uh, I'm going to use the same process I did before. Uh, first I'll hand tighten it uh, as best I can to get the screw in. And then I'll use the um, drill bit, uh, Phillips head bit, with a wrench to tighten it down. This was a little more difficult to get back in than it was to take out. Uh, but you can see me tighten it here now. All right, and this is the last step here before you can start plugging in all of the uh, cables that you taken off the first time around here. All right, and now we have that tightened. So we'll start plugging in the cables again. Uh, you know, feel free to start wherever you like. However, um, you know, you can make sense of all of the uh, wires that need to plug into this. Um, I did want to get the um, screws in first for the uh, leak detection center at the bottom. Uh, so I decided to start at the bottom first. All right, and then we'll move to the right hand side here. And uh, these went in pretty easily. Everything's color coded in different sizes if there was a couple that are the same colored white. So pretty easy to figure out there. Okay, and we'll move on to the left-hand side. Um, you know, however best uh, you can manage this big wiring harness. Um, started with the bottom plug, but uh, it was a little difficult to get to um, and see. So then I moved up to the uh, the top and so on. So you got everything numbered here. So however you like to do it, it's up to you. There's about 15 or 16 plugs to connect to this board. Quite a few. All right, so now that you're all, uh, once you get all hooked up, make sure everything's tight and everything uh, clipped in. 
I'll go around one more time after I plug these last two cables in, make sure everything is tight and secure. Also make sure that you push these um, connectors in straight, especially the long ones. Um, if you go in crooked or you uh, miss it a little bit, you have a chance of uh, bending a pin and uh, that'll be a whole other issue you have to deal with then. So finally, um, it's time to adjust the um, dongle switches here. Um, you know, it's a good idea to take a picture of these uh, before you start taking everything apart, messing with anything in case you happen to bump anything. Now there's three on this board to look at. Uh, I just happened uh, to have to move uh, ones on the center here. You see I missed one there at the end. Uh, so good, a good idea to make sure you're uh, taking a picture of everything before you start messing around with this. There's a lot of things that could be reversed or switched up on you. All right. So after you're done there, it's ready to go. Turn the power back on, the gas, the water pressure, and uh, flip the switch. We'll see what happens here. Uh, as you can see, mine will go through some self-checks to make sure that it's working. And as you can see in the little uh, glass window here, the burner did kick on. You can see the flame in there. So looks like at this point, we're in pretty good shape. Now you can uh, wait for the burner here to go through its uh, cycle and checks. Um, once it heats up the water that's been sitting in the um, hot water heater, it'll um, go ahead and uh, shut down. So you could wait uh, till that happens just to make sure everything runs properly. And once you're done with that, you can see my uh, flame shut down there. We'll go ahead and put the cover back on. Uh, before you get the cover on, uh, make sure you didn't disturb the uh, wire hardness uh, in any way where um, it would be near some moving parts or something that might get hot and uh, melt the wire. Uh, mine happened to be uh, zip tied very well um, and didn't move uh, that much at all uh, before I put the cover back on, so not too much to worry about there. Uh, my particular cover has four screws, uh, two at the top and two at the bottom to secure it. And after that, we're all done. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you.